Hey everybody, I'm Devin Laird from premiumbeat.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up and export a video with multiple audio tracks. I'm going to cover how to properly set up a sequence, tweak settings based on the type of project, and how to properly export your project keeping all of the audio tracks separated out. Uh, being able to separate and export a video and audio file with multiple audio tracks is an important skill, whether it's simply to retain separation from a music track and an audio track for future revisions, or if it's to have separate tracks for a live concert. So what I'm going to do is uh, first, I'm just going to create a new sequence and uh, I'm just going to use digital SLR uh, 1080p 30 frames. Uh, you can use whatever. So what you're going to do is you're, you're going to want to go into tracks. You're going to want to change this, uh, video tracks is fine, you're going to want to go into the audio, change this to multi-channel. And uh, for this particular example, we'll just use two audio channels, so that's fine. Um, down here you'll see there's a default of three, we only need two, so I'm just going to click this guy, we're going to click minus, that'll get rid of it. And uh, output assignments, uh, by default it's, it's going to automatically be set to one and two, so that's okay. And we're going to want to pan uh, left and then right. So this way it'll keep it from being a stereo track and it'll be able to go in as mono tracks. Uh, you'll also want to change the track type from standard to mono as well. And uh, just to, you know, be organized, we'll call this uh, two channel multi track. And one, one thing I, I would recommend is to save this as a preset because yeah, especially if you do this maybe once or twice a year, you you might like not remember all these little settings. And if you have those presets saved, you can just always go to it and it's there. So I'm just going to call this uh, two channel uh, multi track, and uh, I'll just click OK. That will uh, ensure that we have this as a custom sequence. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. So now that we have our sequence made, we're going to go ahead and bring in a video. So right now, this is just uh, a voiceover, and I'll just play a little bit of it. So you can see that um, when I play, the audio is correctly put onto one channel. And so that's a good way to test um, if your sequence is set up properly. You want to make sure that in your audio levels that you have whatever audio being played on the appropriate channel. Um, now we did make this for two channels and you'll see there, that there is a blank audio channel here. So I'll just go ahead and bring in some music. Um, so this is some music I got uh, from Premium Beat. And uh, I'm just going to bring this up and I'm probably just going to lower the volume down just a bit so it will match the, um, the voiceover. And so now you'll see, I'm just going to mute this real quick. Now you'll see that we now have the, uh, the, the voiceover on audio one and then the music track on audio two. So again, the benefit of being able to export both of these separate is that, uh, for whatever reason you, you ever want to come back in and tweak just the voiceover or just the, the music. You can do that because they are they will be separate as opposed to if you just rendered this out the standard way they would be batched together in one audio file so uh, we know we have it set up properly now we just need to make sure it renders properly so I'm just gonna go to uh, file export and media and we're gonna um, choose the quick time as a format not all formats will accept Four channel audio. So you wanna you wanna make sure you find one that does accept it. I know QuickTime does, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, in the video, I'm gonna make sure that my codec is. I'm just gonna do Apple ProRes 422. It's a good one, and I'm gonna click Match Source, so that way I know that it's uh, it's matching my source of 1920 by 1080. Now let's go in the audio, because here is what you need to to make sure. You need to make sure the audio codec is uncompressed. Um, 48,000, that's fine. 16 bit, let's go ahead and change this to 24 bit. Just get a little bit bigger sample size. And here, we want to change this. So right now it's at the stereo. We want to do um, two channels. That way we'll know this will render out both channels. Um, and that's really all I have to do. We'll just go ahead and rename this. Um, I'm going to call this uh, book trailer and put it in my renders folder. 
and hit save and we'll render it out and then after we finish rendering I'm gonna bring it back in and we're just gonna double check that it is in fact separate audio channels okay so we've uh, finished rendering and I've gone ahead and brought back in the uh, the render the book trailer so I'm just gonna drag this in and you'll see what happens so you'll notice that it's only one audio layer well it it actually is two layers but because of the way it, uh, it's default it brings it in as just one layer but you'll notice that if I can make this a little bit bigger you'll see that these waveforms are different you'll notice that this is actually um, part of the voiceover and this is the music so in order to get these separate you're just gonna come over here you're just gonna double uh, right click on it and go to modify audio channels and right now it's set by default to stereo so we want to make that mono and audio clips will make it two because there are two of them and one's left one's right it's perfect so we'll hit OK and now when we bring it in now we have two audio tracks and again these are completely separate you can uh, you can tweak one you know if this one you know like let's say the voiceover is a little too loud we'll bring that down to match maybe the music a little more so this is how you would easily set up a uh, two track uh, audio render but in many cases you may want to do more than just two channels you may want to do four or eight or sixteen and so I figured I'd just show you one more example where we actually use a four channel and show you an example of how of why I needed four channels so um, first of all let's just go ahead and make a new sequence and um, I'm gonna go back to my digital SLR 1080p 30 Again, we want to go back into tracks. Um, we want to change the master stereo to multi-channel, and this time we want to choose four channels. So you'll see here there's only three. We're going to want to add a fourth, and by default it's set to standard. We want all of these guys to mono, because we want each individual track separate. Now here's where it's going to be a little different from just two tracks. You'll see on the output assignments, um, now we have this other option where there's uh, master track three and four. So audio track's good. You want that on one and two. Audio track two, again, it's going to be fine. Audio track three, though, is also going to be default to one and two. So you want to click off that and click three and four. And then the same with audio four. You want to click that off and put it on three and four. So now we know it's mapped correctly. Again, we're going to want to pan these left and right just to get them off of stereo. And uh, again, let's name this and then we'll save it as a preset. So I'm going to call this T track and we'll hit OK. And that'll update. So anytime I ever need to come back in and I know I'm going to want to export four audio channels, I can just come in here. I don't have to keep retweaking these settings. So that's good. We'll hit OK. So this brings in our new sequence. So in this case, um, I needed to make a video with multiple audio layers for a church. There was going to be a live band on stage, and then there was going to be video that was tied to what the band was playing. Now the band needed some elements that were separate, separated out audio-wise. So I was given a click track and a cues track. If you're not familiar with what these are, um, so a lot of times a lot of uh, band members in that are in doing live performances for a concert or whatnot, they'll have inner monitors that um, give them information. So for instance, in this case, they wanted a click and a cues. Now a click is kind of like a metronome and it keeps uh, the band on beat. And then the cues are audible uh, cues that let them know, you know, when a verse is coming up or when a chorus is coming up. So I'll just play just so you have an idea of what this sounds like. Verse two, three, four. So again, they wanted me to be able to render both of these guys separately, and uh, so that way they, they could tweak the levels individually. So um, and they also wanted them on channel three and four. So let's go ahead and move these guys to channel three and four. Now the these were tied to a song. I'm gonna bring that in. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in a video. You can look over here and see that there are in fact four audio tracks, and they're all working properly, and they're separated out. Okay, so now let's go ahead and render out this guy. So we're going to go to File, Export, Media. Uh, again, we want this to be QuickTime. Um, let's change this to Apple ProRes 422. And we'll hit Match Source. So that brings that up. Make sure we are at 1920 by 1080. 
And let's go to the audio. So we want it again uncompressed. Uh, that's fine. We want to change this to 24 bit, just to give a little bit bigger sample size. Now, here we want to change this to four channels because we are working with four channels. We see one through four. That looks great. And, uh, and we should be good to go. I'm going to hit render and then we'll bring it back in and double check to make sure everything is separate. So as you can see, we, we have a video layer and then four separate audio layers. So that was it guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, and be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality royalty free music and sound effects for all your media and video projects.